Hey, what's good, everyone? Chapter 1030 just dropped, and... Okay, <laughs> I, I, I got a lot to talk about, and I just have some things that I would like to address from the start. I'm not really going to go in a chronological order for this specific section, because this isn't the start of the chapter. This is just something that happens around middle third to middle way through a lot of things actually do happen in this chapter which is pretty cool but this is something that i had to bring up from the start because i just literally when i started recording my things for this chapter this was the thing i recorded immediately like while reading the chapter i took a pause just to record this and i'm just like very frazzled about it so here are my thoughts on the kinemon and Kondro things that have occurred in this chapter so that'll play first then the rest of the chapter in chronological order so yeah okay so in regards to the kinemon and conjurer thing why are they alive why why are they alive like like they both died in like literally the best way possible conjurer had that whole scene where he talked about how his entire life's work was to be an actor and he found that great moment with Kinemon saying and you believe me the most because my role was to be your best friend and there was like kind of a sadness to it even though he was satisfied and then Kinemon took him down then Kaido took down Kinemon in a really cool way we've got that whole scene with Kinemon having that reflective moment with Momo saying how he was meant to be the role of his father so he kind of was an actor as well really tied the two together in a really great way and now it's just like why why Oda why would you do such a thing like I already know he has a tendency to never kill anyone but like those two died in such a good way and that really raised the stakes for the entirety of the raid in my opinion i remember i literally mentioned i was talking with my one friend and i was saying how this chapter uh chapter 10 14 where kiku kinemo and Kondro all basically got wiped was crazy because it felt like so many characters we care about are getting you know wiped out and seeing this kind of thing is just annoying i'm definitely curious to see where this goes later like are kinemon and Kondra gonna fight again i don't really i don't really see the point like i'm just worried i don't really know where this is going and i'm kind of interested but more so confused as to why this would be a thing so i just wanted to really really just get my thoughts out on this as fast as possible this is literally like seconds after reading it in the chapter this isn't some premeditated sort of thing so this ordering will be a bit different from the other sections but i just wanted to let you know i am just like uh why i will say i do think that kinemon being revealed as the legs was neat i think it's a nice way to kind of call back all the way back to the start of the new world in punk hazard and his first introduction as the legs i thought that was kind of cool not gonna lie but overall i just really hope that this has some sort of satisfying moment maybe kinemon will die but he'll get to see momonosuke as an adult and someone who you know is fit to lead wano that could be a good moment before he dies but overall I just really hope that this lands well because I can imagine a lot of people are gonna be like for what purpose like I was literally just saying earlier you know what I mean I just hope that this lands well or else I'll feel that this took away a lot of dramatic tension from Kinemon's original seemingly death scene also I never even mentioned what Kinemon was actually doing alive in the first place he had his body split in half by Kaido when he did that really, really cool scene in chapter 1015. And now the body is doing the Kinemon thing, which is farting out words because you can do that because Kinemon can do that for some reason. And it's telling 
the allied forces that Kiku is in danger and dying and all that stuff. And I'm just like, really? You know what I mean? Like, really? Is Ashra Doji going to come back next? That's just, I really don't want it to go this way. I really don't. And it's just, it's not bad. It's just the stakes feel so significantly lowered by this kind of stuff happening that it's taking me out of the story, which is a shame, but I'm sadly used to this at this point. So just a shame that none of this really had that permanent thing. Ironic because this chapter is literally called the impermanence of things. Oh, well. Uh, anyway, rant over about Kinemon and Kondra. Let's talk about other stuff that happened in the chapter. So something I really didn't expect was actually the opening of this chapter, which focused on Drake and Apu, which I think actually was a really good transition back to the main action because obviously they're also members of the worst generation. And seeing what actually happened was really, really cool. A lot of people assumed that Drake and Apu would be pitted against each other and have to fight, but both of them are very much outsiders in this entire war, and Apu, obviously, is not trying to align with Kaido anymore after Queen tried to have him killed, so him and Drake are possibly going to be working together. Why exactly? I don't entirely know, but I'm very, very curious to see what comes of this scenario, because Apu... He's a very not trustworthy person, and Drake, being a master of deception by being undercover for such a long time, also knows not to trust anyone. So I'm very curious to see how this will sort of play out in the long run, and I'm curious what this will lead to just in general. I don't even know if they're going to try and align with Luffy and all them, but it seems like they're definitely trying to possibly take down Kaido, which has me really excited. So the reason that Kondro is still alive is in order for Orochi to get this one final massive attack of flames to kind of destroy the rest of the weapons down in the basement of Onigashima and sort of just cause more havoc. And Orochi says some pretty cool stuff, talking about how the Kozuki clan and the Yonko are both going to be defeated by their hubris and thinking they could easily take down the Korizumi clan. I thought that was a really, really cool way of approaching it, and I just gotta say this right now, the Kazimbo attack that Orochi sort of tells Contro to summon looks really, really cool. Like, genuinely, really, really cool. I love how ethereal it is. It just feels like it's definitely something that is not from this world, which is something that hasn't been really a thing with any of Conjuro's drawings, no matter how good or bad they are. It definitely feels as though this is something different. Like Conjuro has created something into existence that's not just like an animal or something of that nature. It's really, really cool. Along the way, we see Yamato is heading towards the bottom floors of Onigashima. Again, another really good segue connecting Orochi talking about it to Yamato going to search for it. And then Big Mom crashes through and we get a further continuation of that from last chapter. Personally, I think that this chapter does a lot of really good ten connective tissue work. I feel like this is definitely a good chapter to highlight what is going on outside of specific key events which we have gotten a lot of specific chapters so i'm not shocked that we are going back to sort of a connective glue sort of chapter but overall i would just say the segues in this chapter are really really impressive just to put that out there right now but we continue with big mom fighting kid and law and we see some really quite interesting stuff to say the least i know that i can assume many people are annoyed about this sort of thing because obviously this is a bit out of nowhere but it does showcase something very crazy that i'll get into right now so while big mom is attacking kid and law reminisce on a conversation that they had earlier before talking about how they could possibly awaken their devil fruit abilities so in this chapter, we see that 
Law and Kid have Awakened Devil Fruit abilities. And this is nothing like any of the Awakened Devil Fruit abilities we've seen at this point in the story, which is something I just, I love because I was getting really, really annoyed that people were saying Paramecia abilities are all going to be, oh look, they can make the world string or mochi because obviously that's very subjective. I have this whole thing about the rubber world theory talking about how I think that's not going to happen because Luffy's Paramecia fruit does not act how Katakuri and Doflamingo's Paramecia fruits did, but totally unrelated. Basically, Law gets a really cool ability called Kroom, which allows him to not only cut people, but also insert things into people, from what I can tell. It seems pretty cool, and he inserts a sword straight into Big Mom. Then, Kid uses his magnetism to place it onto another object called a sign, and that causes the sword within Big Mom to start attracting every metallic objects in onigashima towards her and personally one really cool combination i thought it was a good way to sort of highlight this next level of their powers to show oh look we can use our powers in more unique ways law kind of just inserting it into big mom sounds like something he could normally do i'm not gonna lie but pretty cool and kid giving magnetism to something else was obviously a perfect fit for this ability overall i think that this stuff is really really cool and the only reason i could see people being annoyed about it is because it wasn't foreshadowed enough that's just me though personally thought it was pretty cool the only thing that really really annoyed me about this chapter was the kinemon conjuro stuff i just kind of wish they stayed dead However, this Conjuro sort of flame apparition thing he's making, the Kazimbo, looks really cool and adds a lot of tension to the story. So, very excited to see where this goes. And I'm really hoping that Kinemon gets a good moment to die now, please, because he had that moment before and then, yeah, that's just how it is. Anyway, what do you all think of the chapter? Personally, I enjoyed it. Obviously, the Kinemon thing was annoying, but a lot of cool stuff overall. So, curious what you think in the comments below. And with that, I hope you enjoyed the video. I make One Piece videos basically every week. So, if you want to see more One Piece content, uh, like, comment, subscribe would be greatly appreciated. And with that, hope you enjoyed the video and have a good one.